Back at Untamed Strength, feeling good, training with Alan again. He's on his meat prep, he's competing in a couple weeks, maybe uh, six or eight weeks out. Hopefully this wind isn't bugging you guys too much, but it's a little loud in there. Uh, he had a single at RPE 8, and then back down sense 4x4 at RPE 8. I've mentioned in the past, if you guys go check back the other videos, uh, that I'm more of a fan of percentage for personal reasons and while I'm coaching, although I sprinkle an RPE when I'm coaching. Personal reasons, I think I'll just always sandbag uh, if I personally used RPE, but something that I've enjoyed is using RPE with Alan, uh, his coach, starting strength coach, um, uses RPE, and so it's a way for me to kind of uh, learn a new style. Although I'm familiar with what RPE is, uh, fairly familiar. I've read a lot of Mike Tashir stuff, uh, watched a lot of his videos, Bryce Lewis, Eric Helms, a lot of people talk about it. Um, but doing it is another thing and what I kind of pride myself on as an athlete in strength and conditioning, powerlifting, and as a coach is that I've trained Westside Conjugate with Mark who's been at Westside. Uh, I've trained uh, methods like uh, kind of a squat everyday Bulgarian and talked to and watched and studied guys like uh, Nax Aida who trained under Abujeyev, the guy who invented the Bulgarian squat everyday method. I've not met Shaco yet, but I've run a bunch of his programs, not only back in the day when I was like 20, 21, but also recently in the last five years. I've worked with Jeremy Hamilton, who's a big sub-maximal training guy, very intelligent lifter, very clean lifter, technician of a lifter. And so I'd like to train multiple things, put them in kind of my tool belt as a coach and as an athlete uh, to not only just feel them, but understand them uh, and truly experience them one thing I've noticed with myself, being self-aware as a human being in life, friendship, family, but also business, it's very important. But being self-aware as an athlete is super important too. And something I know with the RP, as I mentioned, is I would sandbag. So today is kind of be like an eight uh, for a single. I did it for a double, 495, uh, and it felt really good. But if I was by myself, I'd be like, fuck, dude, I'll probably just do 475. But since I'm with Alan, I try to push. And that's why I need uh, kind of a sub percentage and someone give me a percent because then I know okay this coach or I wrote down that I need to do 500 for a two by two that I could do it whereas RPE I would doubt myself not doubt my overall strength but doubt if I should go heavier I'm bad at grinding weights too right now mentality wise just because to grind a weight I need to get fired up I don't like getting fired up on a daily basis I like to keep my adrenals intact I drink enough caffeine to fuck up my adrenal glands so I don't need to get fired up and bash my head through a wall for every set. I've gone on many rants about that, especially to my boy Little Smokey. Uh, hopefully, you guys learn a little something. But Silent Mike, don't I have to lift heavy? All you ever do is lift between 55 and 75%. Don't you have to lift heavy and do singles all the time to get strong? My friends, lifting too heavy too often, if your form is not locked in, your genetics aren't primo and you are at the top of the game uh, can lead to uh, for lack of a better term overtraining uh, which means uh, regression in your strength and injury now uh, when you kind of break down um, lifting in general there's kind of two main uh, methods i guess and they kind of there's millions so it's hard to break it down but two popular ones i guess i should say is kind of the bulgarian method uh, abu Jayev, which is a very high frequency and kind of a and actually very high intensity intensity being closer to your one rep max um you know where lifting uh, a very specific uh lift heavy 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 uh basically daily if not twice a day uh max effort so you know it'll be above 90 percent. hopefully it'll be above 100 or near 100 percent uh depending on the day uh the kind of other route is i guess more of a russian route you know more of a uh, more shako route where you're using, uh, you know, fairly high frequency, um, more uh, higher volume, um, but uh, the intensity is moderate. So, uh, right volume is sets times reps times weight, kind of a cumulative volume over weeks uh, and months is, is what I like to aim for to get strong. The Bulgarian method, you're probably only doing a, a set of one max effort 
uh, once a day in a specific lift. Uh, the Russian method, you are also, uh, at least the Shaco style, you're doing uh, pretty specific lifts, although there is uh, room for exercise variation, uh, but you're maxing out. Uh, West Side of Barbell uh, kind of came from a combination of those and did more exercise variation, maxing out one day and working on lighter, uh, more explosive, submaximal work the other day. Saying one method is better or more optimal uh, than the other is hard to just make a blanket statement uh, because you're talking to a variety of athletes in a variety of sports. So let's break it down to what I believe works most for most power lifters, and that's going to be um, a submaximal range. Uh, lifting too heavy with something like a Bulgarian method uh, can work in a uh, acute, a short period of time. So if you're uh, trying to ramp up for a meet, if you're um, trying to peak for an expo lift or a mock meet, or uh, I would say coming back from injury, but maybe not injury is the best case, uh, coming back from a, a layoff of lifting, uh, doing some heavy lifts every single day in a particular, you know, let's take the squat for example, can definitely help uh, accelerate uh, that strength. But in my opinion and from my observation uh, with athletes that I work with, uh, the hundreds and thousands I have coached, the top level uh, power lifters, strongman and strength athletes I have trained with or picked their brains, and the top level strength and conditioning plus uh, powerlifting coaches I have uh, interviewed, Lifting too heavy too often doesn't work for a variety of lifters, both beginner and experienced. Uh, if you're a beginner, lifting too heavy and your form is not good enough uh, because you're new to the sport, not saying everybody again, but this is most. So if you're not perfect at your technique, the more you lift closer to your one rep max, the harder it is going to be uh, to recover because there's deviation in your form and you're going to be end up hitting muscles uh, that you don't want to hit or that are not ready to accommodate the load. So you're lifting 95% on the squat, your hips shoot up, your knees uh, fall in, they cave in, and your upper back rounds. All those muscles are taking beating where they shouldn't. Whereas if you were more proficient at the lift, you could handle uh, more of that volume and more of that load, uh, which dials me back to if you're a beginner, I again believe that submaximal training is optimal. If you're training at 70, 75% and you're doing five sets of three perfectly over and over and over, you'll build the proper motor patterns. You'll also build the proper muscle uh, and you'll avoid the crappier technique that you would handle closer to 90% than again, avoiding injury. And if you avoid injury, you can lift longer. If you can lift longer, you can accumulate more volume. If you can accumulate more volume, you'll get stronger and your one rep max will raise. That's almost as simple as it gets. Now you guys are saying, well, what about the experienced guys whose technique should be better? Uh, this isn't always the case, but often the stronger you get, the more you've done this, the, the closer you crawl or hike up the ranks in powerlifting, your technique is better. Now uh, I say this isn't always because there are some guys at the top or near the top in powerlifting that are just, uh, you know, genetically more gifted. They're more explosive and they're just stronger than the rest of us. So maybe their technique isn't optimal, uh, but there are many, again, towards the top where their technique is very, very good. So the reason that it doesn't often work for those uh, that are near the top is even though their technique is very efficient, uh, they can produce more power than a beginner. So, uh, and they're obviously lifting more weight. And I've gotten this question on YouTube uh, that, 70% for a beginner uh, or someone who bench presses 185 pounds does not feel nor tax the body the exact same as 70% of someone who benches 550 pounds, uh, even though it's both 70%. Uh, the person who is stronger, who is more experienced, uh, is obviously handling more load. And even though they have the muscle and the technique to support that load because they do bench 550 pounds, they produce more force uh, than the beginner who can only bench 185 pounds. And the more force you can produce, the more damage, the more recovery you need. So uh, I think the example I used in the past is that a beginner might be able to do a five sets of five at 80% or more. Uh, where a more experienced lifter, uh, five sets of five at 70 or 75% may be very difficult or even impossible for some. You know, I don't know if Andre Milanichev could squat a five by five at his 80%. Um, whereas any beginner, if we find their run rep max this week, next week could probably do a five by five at 80 to 85%. And that's because of those reasons, the more advanced lifter, although more efficient and more powerful and has a better structure and technique to handle these things, puts out more force, which takes away from the recovery. And at the end of the day, it is still load. It is just heavier on their body. So 
lifting heavy every single day can work. Does it work long term? I believe not. Does it work for everybody? I believe not. So that's why I always talk about doing what's most optimal uh, for now and for longevity, and that's the submaximal training. So submaximal training, in my opinion, which I've mentioned before, but uh, it allows you to train in a range where you accumulate volume. Accumulating volume over time will build muscle and build the strength you want. It also allows you to train in the range that you can perfect your technique. If you're lifting 100% all the time, you can't think about the cues you need or the motor pattern uh, to fix mistakes that you have in your technical form for these lifts. If you're lifting max effort, something's going to break down. It's going to break down over and over. And people say, oh, something's always going to give when you're near 100%. And I argue that is not the case. If you start to look at the top, top, top end lifters of the world, uh, although it looks like they're only doing, you know, 90% at on their third attempt as a meet, uh, someone like a Bryce Lewis, someone like a um, Andre Milanichev, whoever it might be, even a Dan Green, although they get a little grindy maybe here and there, their form stays nearly the same uh, because they're strong enough. They built in that technique and motor pattern over time to allow their body to lift the exact same way, although the bar speed is less. If your technique breaks down near 90, uh, 90 95, 100%, I think you're always uh, leaving room to grow as a lifter. Uh, which is good. It's something you can work on, uh, but it's not optimal. I'd like to think that all my third attempts look the same as my 70%. Uh, and I believe if you look at, at some of my lifts, they are. Uh, my 590-pound competition squat looks very, very similar to my 450-pound squat. Uh, if you look at my 705 deadlift from competition, it looks very similar uh, to my 500, 550, 600-pound deadlift. Uh, and same with my bench. Uh, it wasn't in competition, but my 405 bench uh, technically was very, very similar to I bench 315. And that's because I've taken the time to work on my technique uh, and be able to handle those heavier loads. Last is kind of that injury. Uh, so... Again, if you're lifting 90%, the form breaks down, you'll get injured. Lifting submaximally, we won't get injured. And in the long term, if you really want to get big and strong, it's going to take 2, 5, 10, 15 years down the road of proper eating, sleeping, and lifting to do it. And if you're injured, you won't be able to do it. You're taking steps backwards. There's something uh, Mark Bell likes to call a uh, lifting hangover. Uh, so same thing with uh, lifting near 90% or lifting too heavy. Uh, doing max effort like rep outs. People ask me about AMRAPs, when to do them, why to do them. If you do a max effort set of five or a max effort set of three, uh, the recovery is just as great as doing a max effort one, in my opinion. Not exactly, but often. So if you're doing heavy ass three by three, I mentioned this in another video, you know, if, if you're doing a three by three at 90%, which may be possible for many people, I would rather do a three by three at 80%. Again, for all those other reasons I mentioned about submaximal, but also, it allows me to get back under the bar sooner. Uh, doing a max effort set of anything, rep, set, or exercise, you're going to need multiple days off before you can perform that exercise again uh, without getting injured and without uh, lifting you know, below 50%. I would rather lift 70% uh, on the squat four days a week than lift 100% one day and 40% the other day and only get two sessions in a week. And that goes back to just practice. Allen Iverson said it, boys, practice. Uh, basically, the more you get to practice, the better you're going to be, not only in the technique, but in building that volume. So if you're going to uh, become very good at basketball, become very good at golf, you can't just golf once a week. You're going to have to do it multiple times a week. And so the lifting hangover of max effort too often leads to regression, in my opinion, because your technique doesn't uh, allow time for you to shine it up and become a better lifter. And it also doesn't allow you to accumulate that volume because you're too busy recovering uh, from the max effort work. The last kind of piece about lifting too heavy uh, or compared to maybe submaximal work that I'm a big fan of is in the submaximal work, I'm kind of always working on uh, cat training. Uh, Dr. Fred Hatfield, Dr. Squat kind of named it that and calls it compensatory acceleration training, which means although I'm using 55, 60, 75 percent of my one rep max, uh, we'll give an example of the squat. I squatted 590 pounds in competition. Uh, hopefully soon that'll be bigger, but for now that's what it is. If I take 70 percent of that, uh, whatever that number is, sorry I didn't do the math ahead of time, but say we're working with 475 pounds, 425 pounds, whatever the case may be, as soon as I get that weight on my back with proper form, bracing, etc., I'm going to control my eccentric, but then on the way uh, up, on the concentric, on the 
ascent, I'm going to try to push into that bar as though 650 pounds are on that bar. And what basically Dr. Fred Hatfield said, and many others, Louis Simmons says it in his own phrase, is that you're going to train yourself to become more powerful. You're going to train yourself to be more explosive. And what we're really doing is teaching our bodies to fire more uh, like motor units per muscle fiber, firing more muscle fibers per second per square inch, whatever calculations you guys want to use. Uh, so we become more explosive and use more of our muscle in that movement. So building in the technique, building in the volume, building more muscle, which more volume just over time builds more muscle. And the more muscle you have, the potential you have to get stronger. And then actually becoming more powerful is all done through not only repetition, uh, but through sub-maximal training. So that's the philosophies. That's all the philosophies I use in Kaizen. That's all the philosophies I use on myself, all the free clients, all my online clients, everything is based on that. And that's not to say that we're not always lifting heavy, uh, but we're not lifting heavy year round. If you have a test date, a mock meet, a competition, uh, whatever it might be, yeah, we're going to lift above 80% for maybe four to all the way up to eight weeks, depending on the athlete, their experience and what works for them. But in general, we're going to hang out in that submaximal category for all those reasons I hopefully named. Here's some just some light accessories, uh, squat bench with my man Allen, a little bit of chin ups, getting some arm work done. Uh, arm work, same idea to be honest, is I'm not doing a max effort set of curls. I'll go till it burns. I'll have a, a sets and reps in my mind to hopefully get some progressive overload. But if you're doing max effort on everything, the recovery, the, the workout hangover is just too much. If you guys enjoyed this type of video, hopefully it informed you guys. I'm trying to get some more complex stuff, uh, kind of compact into videos to teach you guys some programming, teach you guys more about lifting, help you in your progress. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to like. Share this with your friends. I appreciate you guys. More content coming, vlogs, voiceovers, training footage, and instructionals. Thanks, guys. Uh, after all the programming talk in my last couple of videos, uh, most common question was about frequency. Uh, how much, when, and how to know. Uh, so with frequency of each lift will be dependent on uh, experience, strength, obviously genetics, um, efficiency in the lift, how good you are at the lift, uh, how strong you are. Um, if you're dieting, if you're, if you're bulking, if you're getting ready for a meet, and then just overall genetics, kind of sadly that's the answer to everything. Uh, but um, there's kind of a sweet spot for all three uh, that I found with most athletes and myself. So squats, you know, anywhere from two to four times a week uh, tends to be optimal for most. Bench, anywhere from two to four times a week. And deadlift, often one to two times a week. Now, that can be more than just the, the, the straight lift. If you're doing, uh, you know, some kind of underloading uh, method that I kind of talked about in my last video where uh, one day a week squats is paused, one is maybe beltless, and then one's heavy competition style, uh, you can get away with three or four a lot easier than if you're going heavy competition style three or four times a week. Uh, it's another reason why frequency is important in submaximal training is that it's another opportunity to practice. So if you're doing five sets of five on Monday in bench and then not benching till the next Monday, you're getting 25 reps in. It could be good quality, could be 70, 80% perhaps, but if you break that up and do three sets of five, you know, Monday and Thursday, uh, you get more quality in, you can probably handle heavier weight, and then you're getting more practice in. For a basketball player or a golfer, uh, what's going to be better? If you just hit 100 golf balls at the range on Monday, once a week, or if you just shoot 100 free throws once a week, or if you shoot 10, 20, 50 free throws every single day of the week. Obviously, that's going to be better, and that's how most sports are practiced. The difference with weightlifting and strength training and powerlifting is that uh, the load is so taxing on your musculature, uh, your central nervous system, that you can't do 100 reps of squat every single day for in infinity, uh, you'll get injured, breakdown, etc. There's repetition, injuries that happen with all sports, but when you bring load involved and increasing heavier load, uh, that frequency kind of gets monitored, uh, self-monitored. So you're gonna get injured or you're gonna regress. So the sweet spots, as I mentioned, uh, you can underload those. So if you're deadlifting and your technique's perfect, you could probably get away with twice a week. Uh, but if you're technique is, is, is not perfect and you're working on it, maybe one's a medium day and one's a light day, or maybe one's a medium day and the other day is a stiff leg, or one's sumo, one's conventional. There's a lot of different ways to work around it. It depends on your goals. Uh, that's why I can't be so specific and maybe talk like I'm talking vague, but it depends on your goals. It depends on uh, what phase you are in training, what phase you are in life. Maybe, you know, right now my training is uh, a little up and down because of travel and my diet, um, but I'm doing the best I can 
And so there's not an exact structure. I have how many times a week I want to squat, bench, and dead, and then I kind of go by feel from there. But that's because I'm kind of, uh, like I said, I'm dieting and I have other priorities in my life. Once it comes meat time, hopefully, you know, August, things start to settle, my diet's done, I can ramp up for a meet, and then I'll be a lot more specific with the percentages and weights I hit in the gym. For now, because of my experience uh, and, and my self-awareness, I know my body is an athlete, I can get away with uh, going, you know, three sets of five on 275 on bench today, knowing I'm gonna do heavy overhead tomorrow, probably bench again uh, in two days, and bench three or four times this week, uh, and get the, enough volume to at least keep the stimulus, if not keep my strength long-term. Genetics, number one, how uh, efficient you are in the lift, number two, how strong you are in experience, kind of number three. Those are the key factors on deciding frequency. Squat, two to four times a week works best for most. Don't go from squatting twice a week all the way to four. You know, add more volume on twice a week and then kind of chop that volume down, add a third day, do that for four to six weeks, add a fourth day if that is your goal. Deadlift once or twice a week. Some people can get away with three, not many. Bench anywhere from two to four again. If you're benching twice a week, I mean, uh, you know, my boy Pikulski's about to do a meet. He benched 402, I believe at 190 last meet, and he's only benching twice a week. Uh, I think we're gonna bench, excuse me, he's gonna bench. Uh, we're gonna plan his bench to, to hit maybe 423 or 440 in this next meet. Don't tell him, he might be scared. Uh, and he'll be benching twice a week. A little smoky, much more efficient presser super super locked in form plus he has a lot of uh, musculature in the in the pressing muscles we're benching three times a week so then he'll you know also probably bench 430 to 440 in this next meet uh, but we're just taking a different route there hopefully that helped you guys out with the frequency leave your questions below like the video i'm out of here